are here today with one of our very own BYUI art faculty, gallery director, and artist himself, Gerald Griffin. We're very excited to talk with him about his new exhibit and his career as an artist. Jerry, I've known you for a long time. How long have you been teaching, and how has your teachings been um, changed over the years? Well, first of all, it's great to be here with you, Kyung, um, and thank you for this opportunity. I, uh, I went to school at BYU, and um, I have both a bachelor's and a master's degree from BYU. And when I was pursuing <clears throat> my master's degree, I took uh, many opportunities to teach classes, um, as, as graduate students often do. Uh, and so my career in teaching actually started in 1978. I taught several classes for BYU, including painting and introduction to visual arts. After that, I was hired at Eastern Arizona College and taught there for two years. And then I was ultimately hired at Ricks College in 1984. So I've had a 31-year career at, at, uh, at Ricks College, BYU, Idaho. But I had a little bit of teaching experience before that. Yeah. Um, how has teaching art changed you as an artist? That's a really interesting question and a good question. Um, because when you're in art education, when you're an art teacher, uh, you spend most of your time suggesting things to other people, giving critiques, um, looking at an awful lot of, I, I won't say bad art, but I'll say artist development in progress. And consequently, I think it's, it's important from time to time to be uh, able to go to museums and see art of colleagues and produce your own artwork so that you can uh, not be so immersed on that student level that you can't progress yourself. And so um, it's an interesting dynamic because you spend most of your day helping people develop. And then in my case, at least, I have a studio in my home. I, uh, once I have dinner, I'll go down to the studio and I'll, I'll paint my own paintings and try to develop myself on a professional level yeah. at that point. And I bet that influenced your students because they see you yeah. constantly producing and painting and that yeah. inspiring too. Yeah, it's fun to take the students over to the studio and they, I think they see a little different side of you when they're there. You're not just a presence in the classroom, but you're, you're, you're become more human. You become an individual and they see your surroundings and your interests. And sometimes they see a level of artistry out of you that, that they don't see when you're at school. Right, right. Yeah, hopefully anyway. Yeah. Um, so over the years, um, you've went through a lot of students, good and bad. Mm -hmm. Is there one thing that you hope your students to take away from your classes? Yeah, also an excellent question, and I've thought quite a bit about this. Um, students often come in with a very definite direction of something that they want to do. Uh, very often they are heavily influenced by their teachers. They see a teacher they admire and they want to become like that person, and they develop their artwork in that direction. The thing that I hope that I can uh, ultimately impart to a student is a sense of freedom and individuality when it comes to the pursuit of art, even though they may be heavily influenced by someone, that they need to recognize that they are a unique individual and that they will ultimately make their own contribution in the arts. And that, that's becoming more and more important to me as I go along in my career to see them develop as an individual. Yeah. Um, you know, you may remember I took some of your classes. Sure. And um, I would say that changed me as an artist. Mm -hmm. I, I fell in love with freshness, painterly paintings, mm -hmm. and, and I paint not as much as you do now, but uh, I really appreciated the opportunity of seeing someone who paints like you do with a brush strokes and um, a colors that fresh mm -hmm. and well there's you know there's that part of it where you can gain some particular insight from an individual instructor mm -hmm. but there's also the other aspect that that's why we have 
several different instructors that all teach the same kind of classes is that you can gain different things. In our, in our case, for example, we would have somebody like a Leon Parson who, who has a different approach to painting than I do, slightly different, and Vince Bodley and, and, and other adjunct faculty that we have. And hopefully we all contribute something to, to a person's individual sure. growth. Yeah. Sure, wonderful. So. so let's talk about your new exhibit. Okay. I am so excited and I have to say I was stunned when I first saw oh. your body of work. Stunned in a good way, I hope. Very good way. <laughs> um, they are composed with a stunning colors, unexpected colors, mm. some retro, some fresh, maybe even popular colors mm -hmm. these days, yeah. um, with a very powerfully executed, um, I can't wait to public to see it. Oh, good. Um, you're very well known with the landscape paintings, mm. completely different yeah. um, focus. Yeah. What inspired you? Well, you know, when I first started out in painting in high school, I, I was interested in realism and I was interested in still life. And for many, many, many years, all I really painted was still lifes. And, and in that regard, you learn how to render objects, you learn about light and shade, you learn about saturation of color. Um, but when I moved to Idaho, uh, I recognized that, that landscape painting was tremendously popular here. It sold well, number one, but it's, it was a completely different kind of painting. I'd never really painted landscape, and we have such beautiful landscape in eastern Idaho and Montana and the surrounding area that I, I started painting landscapes. And to be honest with you, my initial attempts were, I look at them now, and, and the colors were very garish, and the the lighting was not atmospheric lighting like we have outdoor with the cool light and so on and so forth. And so one of the things that I tried to do over the years is to develop the ability to paint convincing landscapes. I don't paint plein air or out of doors as much as I should because most of what I do is in the studio, but I do teach a, a, a plein air landscape painting mm -hmm. class. So I spent probably the last 10, 12, 15 years painting landscapes and, and selling them in, in galleries in the area. But the new show is a return to uh, uh, an idea that I had when I was uh, in college. And it's, it returns to a kind of a painting that I've actually never been able to completely free myself from. I have a very linear, very clean, very architectural, graphic approach to painting. Mm -hmm. uh, that's kind of my natural tendency. I very much am a, a, a devotee of, of Wayne Tebow and some of these people that have a little bit, you might call it an abstracted sense of painting. And consequently, when you have the opportunity for a leave, you, you think up a project. Sure. and. And I just thought, or and you work in a series, and I thought, you know, this would be a, a really, really fun project is to, to marry kind of two things that I like. One, my love of architecture. Always wanted to be an architect. Architect, should have been an architect, didn't become an architect. And my kind of graphic, uh, kind of linear treatment of, of flat surfaces and, and shadow and shade. And so it was a really, really fun project for me. Well, if you hear the words linear, graphic, it sounds maybe dry, but your body of work um, are very sensible. They're oh, fun and they're, thanks. yeah, so um, I think it will receive very well. And I know you have one. <laughs> yes, yeah, thank you for your generous yeah, donation. I love them. <laughs> yeah. Um, so do you think, this is maybe personally a little nostalgic, uh -huh. the long time project maybe coming back. Mm -hmm. Do you think we may see some of this type of uh, paintings more in future? Hard, hard to say. Um, my project five years ago was also an idea that I had back in graduate school. And at this point in my development mm -hmm. as an artist and in my you know, life, I mean, I'm 63 years old, 
uh, I'm kind of cleaning up all the old ideas, you know, and if they're good ideas, I, I want to do them. And, and again, this feeds into this idea that when you're an artist who is not necessarily developing an artistic personality for the public that identifies with a certain type of work, but that you're an academic teaching in a university, you really have complete freedom to, to undertake any project that you're interested in. And, and, and I, that's what I've done. Yeah. I, that's what I've embraced. And so what is in the future? Very, very, very hard to predict. I, I do have some ideas, but um, who knows? You know, I, I'll work through something and halfway into it, I'll get bored and move on to something else. So that's what I love about it, though. Well, it's good. complete freedom. Good. Yeah, and, and I, um, yeah. as I said, I'm very impressed and I love them. Yeah, and thank I, you. I hope to see some more and I think your great strength um, shows through this new oh, body of work. Thanks. Um, <clears throat> so as a landscape painter and with this new exhibit, mm -hmm. is there, a, how is the approach different when you paint man-made structure like current exhibit oh. versus natural landscape? Yeah. That's a really, really good question. It's um, painting trees and mountains and streams in a fairly realistic, literal way, again, requires this um, idea of a different kind of light and a, in my way of looking at it anyway, kind of a softer treatment, an atmospheric treatment, uh, lots of color shifts, lots of softness. This particular project was went back to my roots as a, as a draftsman. When I was in seventh grade, I took a drafting class, and I loved it. And I, all, I developed this ability uh, just because I had the interest of drawing floor plans, drawing elevations of my neighbor's houses. At and seventh doing, grade? No, 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 this is much later. But that's where it started. Yeah. And, and I, I would draw... You know, people would, people come to you as an artist in the visual realm thinking that you're kind of all-knowing, you know, which is, a, of course, a big <laughs> fable. But they'd say, well, you know, we're getting ready to paint our house. What color do you think we should paint it? And, and I'd say, well, let me, let me help you with that. And I'd, I'd draw a, an elevation of their house and then color it in three or four different ways with colored pencils. Wow. And the... The benefit of that is that you get your whole neighbor neighborhood painted the way that you like it, you know, if, if they take your suggestions. But um, that drafting has always kind of been with me, and I've always enjoyed it. I draw floor plans. We, we've made additions to our homes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So consequently, when this project came up, I, I just got a great big T-square, a great big drafting table, and I could lay these things out using a, a triangle and a T-square. Where in, in a landscape painting, of course, uh, obviously you wouldn't do that because of the subject that you're dealing with. So for me, again, the graphic aspect of it was just really a lot of fun. Sounds I just like enjoyed myself. you just had a myself. great fun. I, I, I did, I, I really did. Yeah. They were so fun. Mm -hmm. And I hope that shows through in the work that, yeah. like you say, it kind of has some vitality to yes, it. Yes, you know? it certainly does. Yeah. And again, I can't Wait till show to the public. Oh, good. Yeah. I'm actually kind of nervous about it myself, but I'm yeah. glad you're I don't enthusiastic. Know why. Yeah, <laughs> I'm so excited to um, curate our gallery with your uh, yeah. colors Perfect. and shapes and just, and then again, maybe those who listen to your talk, maybe so, picture in their mind some graphics or lines and shapes, but it isn't. It's executed very sensitively mm. and um, the sense of sensibility of the color choices, maybe compliments or th they're just wonderful. Oh, thank I you. Think it'll be great. Well, I have to give some credit to my wife on that because I, I will paint something and I'll call Marilyn down to the studio and say, <laughs> will you come and look? And she'll come in and if, if it's, oh, then, then I know I've, I've hit it. <laughs> if it's silence, then I know I need to kind of change things. And there were a few times when there was a little silence there. Yeah. And, and I had to think, okay, what do I need to do to, you know, it, you mentioned earlier the color scheme. I also have a daughter, Julia, who's, who's quite a talented uh, decorator in a way. And I, just being in her home and, and being around her and, and my wife, 
I, I you know, I've some of my ideas about colors have right. changed. They've right. shifted. So okay. I have to give credit where credit is due. Oh, great. Yeah. Wonderful. Um, we talked about some of your process. Mm -hmm. um, do you envision at the beginning your host shows and start, okay, I'm going to do three doors or mm. is that how it works? Or do you just kind of go and, oh, this is great. I'm going to just add it. Or how does that work? A little bit of both, I think. Sometimes you get surprised by a picture. Uh -huh. Diane Arbus said, I've, I've never taken a picture that I've actually planned. They're either always better or worse. Uh -huh. And you know how that is. Yeah. When you get into something and you'll wrestle and fight with something and it won't work out. So there's a little bit of surprise. And I think that's a good thing. But there's also some planning. If I've done, if I've done two big red and yellow paintings, I think I probably need a green or a blue painting. Uh -huh. And um, <clears throat> I, I've thought a lot about what the inspiration for this show was, and I think that w the conclusion that I've come to is that I'm a person that is very inspired and kind of motivated and stimulated by the visual world. And when I see something that's interesting, very often I want to translate it into a painting. Mm -hmm. And so several of these have been um, where I've just been, like I was in Wallace, Idaho, a little mining town up in northern Idaho eating lunch, and I, I happened to stare across the street and there was the perfect painting. It was a bright turquoise house with a raking shadow, an interesting door, and I just thought, oh my gosh, you know, it was just wonderfully inspirational to see that. And so some of them come to you and you want to, you want to have other people see what you're seeing. Sure. The quotation in my show is, um, an artist does not paint what he sees, but what he must make others see. And consequently, I like to be able to um, say, you know, the world around us uh, isn't isn't just art, subject matter for art that people think should be art, but it's everywhere. Right. It's at the grocery store, it's at the swimming pool, it's at the, it can be on a trash pile, really. Sure. If you're, if you're, if things interest you visually, which they do me, then they get turned into paintings yeah. really fast. Um, that's how I felt when I first viewed and somebody's doorstep, Oh, I want to walk into there. Yeah. Or when you see the awning over the windows. Sure. Oh, I wish I could go there. Yeah. Things like that. Yeah. And it's, yeah. um, it's working. Yeah. Yeah. That's and, and you have to, people should understand also that simply seeing a sensation doesn't guarantee a good painting. And uh, very often you have to take the elements that are presented and arrange them and manipulate them and control them and adjust them mm -hmm. so that it makes a successful work of art. Right. And sometimes you hit on that and sometimes you miss. But uh, this is a big lesson that you impart to students is that nature almost, n almost never gives you this perfect picture. And that's really not what art is. Otherwise, you would just all walk around with, photo with cameras. Right. But it's taking those elements and making that picture uh, a work of art. That's the difference in being able to see that. Sure. So that's wonderful. It's a big part of it. Um, what What are some of the hopes that you have for the viewers to visit the gallery and and um, take away from this exhibit? Well, <clears throat> when I was uh, a, in college at BYU, I had a design teacher by the name of Alex Dureas. This show is dedicated to Alex. He was an iconic design teacher. Everybody who has gone through there, my friends Matt Geddes, Carla Jemison, my own wife, uh, Marilyn, who was an art student there, know the tremendous influence that this man had on us and many, many other people. The reason he had such an influence was that he, when he taught you, you never saw the world the same way. It was different after that. I remember going in and having his lecture on negative and positive shape. And when I walked out of that classroom, every crack in the sidewalk, all the telephone lines, the lines in the parking lot, everywhere, now all of these things became 
a, a combination of negative and positive shapes. Mm -hmm. Such a tremendous influence he had. So my hope would be that someone who comes to the gallery doesn't come in there with just the expectation um, that, oh, I'm just going to look at some pictures on the wall and have some refreshments and leave, mm -hmm. but that I'm going to look and see the way life can look. And maybe they will view life differently from a visual point of view in a way that will be enriching and enlightening to them and, and change their life for the better a little sure. bit and so that they can get more joy out of the visual things that we have here on earth. And I think that's important to everyone, as I say in my Art 101 class, um, we all make aesthetic choices. Uh, what color are we going to paint a room? What kind of curtains are we going to pick? What kind of pillows? What kind of car are we going to buy? How are we going to dress? You know, those are kind of mundane, you know, decisions that we make every day. And some people don't think about them very much. But anything that, in, that elevates your level of sensitivity uh, in the visual realm, I think, is a good thing. And so if somebody can come away having had that experience, I will have considered it a success. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. And um, I, for one, um, am so looking forward to the opening. Okay. And thank you for creating a wonderful body of work. Oh. And I thank very you. much enjoyed our conversation. Perfect. And thank you. Thanks, Kian.